So we are here again in Dancing Dialogue with my lovely friend Olafur, all the way in Iceland. And what can I say, Olafur, again, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. Today we have chosen something very exciting. It all started off by me sending a message to Olafur at 12.12 and he couldn't stop laughing. And I actually put it on right back on Olafur to tell us what his laughter was all about. 12.12. Yeah, I love the, I love the synchronicity of numbers and, 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 the, and the beautiful, I mean, it's, it's a great sort of um, continuation uh, of our beautiful dialogues here to four, you know, and um, um, when you sent me the message, I, I saw like, oh, you know, because we have a di very different, we're in very different time zones. So you, you probably didn't have a, a, a clue of uh, you know, exact time when you were sending the message, but it's a number 12, 12. And it's like one of those things that like, you know, that uh, people that pay attention to uh, number synchronicities and those kind of things that you know you might notice you know you sometimes see we some uh, look at the clock and see 11 11 or uh, 3 3 3 these kind of things and and um, I've been noticing these things for a long time but I found what, what I found particularly beautiful uh, is that I saw 12 12 is that the number 12 is a particular uh, uh, meaning to me um, and the, from what I have learned to understand in terms of what I, uh, as I understand, like from a metaphys metaphysical perspective, that uh, I see, the, uh, and I, what, what I have, from what I have learned, like I said, is that we live in a 12 based energy system, uh, but not to, without going into the depth of what, what that means is that 12 is a number that sort of represents harmonic resonance or wholeness. So it's like, uh, like we said before is that we've been talking about the numbers, uh, we've been talking about the number three and, and sort of wholeness coming back to resonance with itself. <laughs> And how does wholeness do that? You know, well, it does that uh, most probably through us as individual perspectives of a greater whole. And I believe it's like, you know, the way our journey has been is like you know, our spiritual journey and our integration, and aligning ourselves with, uh, with uh, both masculine and feminine aspects and you know, all, the all the journey we are, we are on in terms of building consciousness and finding deeper value and meaning and integrity to our lives is that you can say that like that comes into a place of wholeness that we are finding ourselves and we realize that we are a part of some whole some kind of wholeness so when i see <laughs> when i saw the number 12 12 it was like oh you know two individuals coming from wholeness having a dialogue with each other. And that's kind of very much to me, at least reflects the kind of dialogues we've been having because it's very much sort of uh, uh, expansive and, 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 and joyful in a way that like, it feels like, you know, yeah. becoming anchored into uh, greater aspects of ourselves through those dialogues. Exactly. So, there you go. <laughs> there we go. And of course, I took it on very fast. I love numerology. I'm not as versed in uh, metaphysics, obviously. I, I love, I'm more into quantum physics and spiral dynamics and fractals. But of course, when you mentioned that 12 is the wholeness, that was like the harmonic resonance. The, the lights for me really went on because these things make sense to me. I, I don't tend to be very logical, linear, rational, but when I have this resonance, it's my whole body just saying, yes, for me, this is truth. And of course, it is very beautiful to see that you and I, the 12 twelves, the two wholeness come together to dance in dialogue. And this is really what we are doing. And so, as you said, 
we are now all in a space and we have an opportunity to go into this harmonic resonance. So I want to take the resonance to the harmonic resonance. We all have in a way now this access to wholeness, to the 12. And that access is actually sparking off like the fractals into infinity and boundlessness. And this seems to me the mutation, the evolution, whatever we want to call it, of humanity that the shamans, by the way, have called the shift from homo sapiens, men and women of the mind, to homo luminous, men and women of the light. I would even like to coin it now to access 12. <laughs> Because when we are the 12 and whole, we are luminous. Yes. And of course, for me, fascinating at the moment as well, that it seems like the mind in its conditioned, what I call now entrapped, enslaved, entangled ways, mm -hmm. domesticated, conditioned, mm -hmm. is kind of a bit behind. So what can we do at this time to assist the mind in this mutation the light codes the 12 is already here but it seems the mind doesn't quite believe it yet i mean that is the this is the question that probably most of us as human beings are asking ourselves at these times because we have come uh, to large extent to a wall, the the world being the, the world being our old world view, which is a segregated, separated narrative that we have been living in, and the parts of our minds that are fixed in that narrative, they are not finding any pathway because there is no hole within that narrative. We are separated from the whole itself. But thank you for uh, mentioning all that, you know, and aligning the, to the number 12. It's like uh, my name, my, my name on Instagram is actually Oliver Aron 12. And uh, the name of my holding company, like, and, and I, I, you know, this is not a, a business meeting, is Access 12. And it was always intended to be like, uh, this is what we want to do. We want to offer these services that help human beings come to their wholeness. But anyway, assist them come to the wholeness in the same way we have been assisting ourselves to come to our own wholeness. But um, what I find uh, it's like fascinating in these times is that we are now starting to be, I think we are becoming more open-minded due to the fact that we have uh, hit a wall. We have hit a wall in terms of what is happening on the planet. And the, there is this, um, at times we're, we're starting to see the consequences of our actions and the mindset we have been living in, which is largely, I think, a polarized mindset, mm -hmm. disconnected from ourselves. We are separated from each other as people and genders. And we are seeing like, as if the uh, men are separated from women and men, uh, women separated from men and uh, all these kind of strange ideas about, um, that we have got accustomed to and we learn to perceive the world in this way rather than seeing each other as a part of the same whole you know and uh and and and, and that we don't lose any any value or any worth by that we actually gain worth from it we, it's like oh i am a part of something beautiful and that makes me what perhaps also beautiful you know that's something like this is a kind of an ideology that we seem to have lost yes i think yes. to some to large extent even though this is something that we can see in all our spiritual teachings and but it's all and, and, and but but we have mystified it to such a degree that it is no longer a part of our it's not a part of our everyday life yes which so is, is interesting yeah we're reading all these texts we are we are so conscious and evolved but yet our mind is so 
set and conditioned to creating harm, to be separated, to find ways of being in war. And so I feel that a bridge is needed in the mind that starts for me with acceptance. I think it's okay to accept that maybe humanity was like that for 5,000 years. Okay. This is part of the evolution as well. This is part two. The, the separation and the distortion maybe from the wholeness, from the 12, is part of our story. Absolutely. But I feel it's neither good or bad. It is just that. So yes. if we could accept that in our mind without being angry, without being traumatized, without creating more drama, without feeling I need to rescue, I need to judge, I need to do anything like that, if we can just accept that and start taking responsibility how to live in wholeness, maybe it's not all that hard. I feel a lot comes from that drama mindset. So if this is so and we damaged and we were harmful and all of that, then we are guilty and we need to be blamed and punished. But maybe not. What if we could just accept that and go into that wholeness and to that interconnectedness of the wholeness? And as you said, seeing self and others as beautiful. Maybe yesterday I didn't get it. But hey, today I'm conscious and I operate from my wholeness, from my 12. Absolutely, absolutely. That resonates very, very strongly with me, you know, everything you said. And, um, and, it, and, it, and it is true. There is like, you know, uh, I think this is a, a journey of, of, a conscious, of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and if we see ourselves as conscious beings, living beings that are conscious, then <clears throat> we can learn to see things in a context that like um, actually derives value from this journey. We can use it as a fertilizer for our own growth, you know, and our own evolutionary journey. And maybe it was meant to be there. Yes. Maybe you know. Yes. Maybe life isn't always just meant to be harmonious and 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 and, flow, and, and perfect flow and harmony. It, it, we are meant to learn from all these kind of different trajectories, and, and and it's also you know maybe adding the power of choice to the equation is that you, you know if if you also if you don't want to live your life in harmony, if you also, don't want to connect with the whole. You don't have to, and that's also okay. But now we're just living on a planet is that we can no, long, we can no longer continue on the same pathway without you know, destroying ourselves. So we need you know, to respond to that in some way that is you know, the, the, that our lives becomes a contribution to the whole that we are a part of, in that case, the planet itself so there's no longer time for me to be you know doing what my ancestors have been doing for the last five thousand years this is a different time yes but what they yes. did is okay but what i do is something that i have to be responsible for and make a choice for that's how i see it. exactly yeah i i particularly love and we always come to the fertilizer because i feel it's such a beautiful metaphor and I strongly believe that as we are shedding this old stuff and it, we allow it to be a fertilizer, it can, maybe this is necessary, that fertilizer, that old conditioning, all that old stuff that hasn't worked, it, does, or it doesn't work for us at this time now, it's just a fertilizer. Yeah. And this for me Absolutely. is a beautiful letting go and allowing the wholeness because it fertilizes the wholeness 
the codes inside are already here. And I mentioned to you before, in my shamanic tradition, they talk about the shift from the Homo sapiens to the Homo luminous. And I feel it's actually also the shift back into wholeness. The men and women of the mind, they were limited in the mind. The luminous is complete because it sees the whole picture. And all it takes is that responsibility step by step. And as we were exploring and dancing here already, and it affects all aspects of all life. And also we were talking about basic values and secondary values. And I, I just love to see what comes out of that. So where do you feel, see, have this harmonic resonance of the basic values of this whole system? It's such a, that's such a, a great question. <laughs> because, you know, we talk about values very freely in, you know, in, in the world we're living in. And values is something that we, we think of value. Values are often something just like that we just, you know, come up with. <laughs> but I see values as something more fundamental than that. Mm -hmm. Values are imbued in the process of life itself. So whenever we embody those values and take them to heart and become them, we become aligned with life itself. So when we talk about you know, we talk about integrity. What does that mean? Does that mean that I, that I, you know, do whatever I'm told to do? Mm -hmm. But what if I'm told to do is not good for the planet or the whole? For me? Yeah, but it might be good for me or someone else. And we can call that integrity. But what is it actually? You know, what is integrity? And then you have to look at it, look into look at it from a functional perspective or look at what are the attributes that generate that are generated from um, integrity and then you see like okay what about our relationship with the whole what if that is the actual integrity and when we embody that integrity we what will feel connected to the whole and in that process, there is no argument about right or wrong. It is just there. And you will know when you are, we are living in integrity. And when you're not, the moment you're no longer living in integrity, it's the moment you will feel disconnected from the whole. So that is in terms of what we, what do you think of values? So take those values and those principles, and start applying them to our projects, our businesses, our relationships. And we will see most probably that our relationship or whatever we put through integrity into, you know, put our energy into in that way by putting our values into them, they will tend to probably grow with us, you know, in alignment with what the values we put into them. But we live in a system, I would say, that have put, like you mentioned, secondary values. Secondary values are values that are not essential to life itself, but we have created uh, them as a um, symbol mm -hmm. of true values. And that, and I was like, and that would you would say that maybe are, for example, money. Money are meaningless, valueless without being connected to something essential. But we have created a pathway in our in our system. In the, in the world we're living in, that where, where money has become a driving engine, as a prime, treated as a primary value. And this has caused a great destruction to the planet and everything, you know, the way we are operating now. It, just, it is just because we have used money as a replacement for true value, not that mon money is a bad thing in and of itself. So now in terms of like, when we start to connect secondary values as an extension of a primary value, we can really start to see the true usefulness of, of, 
of it. Like for example, if we if we start to use money, this is part of my dream, my vision, what I hope to happen in the in my lifetime, is that we start to use money, pour all these billions and trillions of dollars and euros into sustaining the biosphere that we are living on. We put the money where they came from, put the money where they belong. And did, but of course, this is something that like sort of um, uh, stimulates what kind of regenerative finances would look like. You know, we start to use money to support life. Yes. yes. And then, is it, so that, then you use a secondary value to, to reinforce a primary value. But the primary values are the values that support li where life supports life. And those are connected to the connected very much connected to the emerging world view of living systems, regenerative principles, you know, beyond sustainability. And then, and the spring that is coming through for us that is related now to the twelve, to the wholeness. Yeah, exactly. And this is just so beautiful how it all comes together, Olafur. It's just yeah, the sparks are going out. And I, I feel with you, you know, maybe really, maybe not, maybe, maybe not surely the true value, primary value all is, is integrity with the whole. Yeah. Yeah, I think and so. This is, and as you said, it's so far away from right and wrong. It's about this harmonic resonance and it's dynamic. It's dynamic in nature because life itself is dynamic. Even though the whole system doesn't need life, but it creates life. Exactly. It makes life possible. And so when we come into this primary value of the whole system, then we are able to use the secondary values, the symbols, is not really values, they are symbols that come out of true values, a different world view that is in harmony with all living systems, then it can no longer be what it is today, the money. And yes, I, I feel like you, you know, we have taken out resources from the earth. And now we're surprised that this is not working. So what about if we put money back? I mean, you can't put the money back into the mountain, but you can spend money to create natural regeneration. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I feel we are opening a very different perspective. This is beyond maybe even world view. The world view we lived in was scarcity in economics, but actually nothing is scarce. It's just the way we saw it and the way we use it or misuse it. So Absolutely. the moment we are in this integrity, it's all easy. And I do feel we already have the codes and I feel as an emerging archetype that really fits in here very beautifully, it's obviously the consciousness architect. I think today we really dancing our dialogue on the consciousness architecture. How to how to step into a consciousness that is beyond the awake state, beyond the limitation of the mind. And the confusion sometimes of emotion. Emotion is not only confusing, but can be beyond the drama. Absolutely. So I feel not only you and I, but many, the ones who are listening and those who are not listening, but feeling the energy that is ignited what is it that you would like to share to make peace, to accept that everything that was is a beautiful fertilizer for what we are becoming as wholeness? Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you see, I, I really like, you know, the, you have this picture behind you, the, the Buddha. The Buddha, yeah, says he painted it, uh-huh. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I was, so, I've been sort of have, uh, exchanging uh, messages with, uh, with my uh, friend uh, recently, and he was talking about uh, Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was talking about the four, some you know it's like i don't think i need to come up with anything you know yes it's like, i don't need to we, we already have all the answers to this you know there's already everybody has them everybody's listening to them knows the answers mm -hmm. and it was like it's just a matter of what is your style of preference yes. of how do you want to go about this for yourself what do you what makes you feel alive in this context you know there is no external how you know, manual, it, it, it is all built within us and the way we prefer to, to do this. And you, we've had these amazing teachers, you know, coming to the planet, Buddha and Jesus and whoever, you know, and, you know, Eckhart Tolle, uh, or whoever, whomever you resonate with, just go with it, you know. But the beauty is that um, um, uh, he, he was talking about the four immeasurables. And I found this very nice. And it's very kind of attuned to the resonance principles, like again, the 12, the wholeness. You know. those, those four immeasurables are love, compassion, mm -hmm. altruistic joy. Mm -hmm. You know, the altruistic joy is the joy we're feeling right now yes. when we are coming together in, in the name of the wholeness, yes. not just in the name of ourselves and the ego, we're coming together in the name of wholeness. We're building something together for the wholeness, and we feel whole in the process. That that is what I understand altruistic joy yes. to be. And we don't have to do it all day and every day. You might also do something that are <laughs> is like you know we, we still have our ego habits or whatever. I'm not going to say that like whatever it is, it's these strong habits that we have inherited from our parents and their, their parents, et cetera, are going to dissipate in a minute. Therefore, we need love and compassion for ourselves mm -hmm. and others. And then is the, the, the fourth thing, you have love, love, compassion, altruistic joy, and then equanimity. Yes. So equanimity is like, it's like being, a, a, it's like uh, impartial a little bit in terms of non judgmental yes like let's just not you know we don't know what is the greatest outcome of all of this you know? so if we start making judgments about it whatever it whatever we think it is it's most probably not what it is <laughs> so so letting it be letting it unfold in the way that it wants to unfold towards the highest probable outcome that can come from all of this with the fertilizers of the negative with the choices that we make with the gathering of the resources let's allow that to unfold to us and so it's like for me it's like you can see you can find the answer in the four immeasurable of you know of, of buddhism you can find it in in in, in Christian approaches, you can find it in just simply being present with yourself and not allowing your ego to be in the driving seat alone. Maybe have it in the back seat or in the in the co you know, co pilot seat or whatever exactly. you know. Don't be the driver. Yeah. So anybody can find the answers if they look for themselves. I think it is absolutely accessible. Yeah. And this, all of us yes, and I think this is this is the key and this is the truth. We all have it. Yeah. Whether you follow a religion or a philosophy, or if you are not, whether you call yourself spiritual, whatever, all of us have that access. And it's, of course, interesting how it goes back to the four immeasurables. I mean, love is just the key. When your operating system is love, which is your heart, It's it flows. Yeah. So it's not like a particular effort, a particular external situation, a particular initiation. It is more the acceptance of who am I? 
without the ego, even if it sits sometimes somewhere. <laughs> but it is the full acceptance of the I am, as we have in the Advaita, in, in Ramana Maharashi, Mochi, in a more contemporary sense. It, it comes down all to the same. And of course, the equanimity for me is very important because often we, we are so trained to compartmentalize, to put people in boxes, to analyze, to come to conclusions of things that we don't know. And that for me is also crucial, as you just say, well, just let it unfold. And I feel you can take anything from any philosophy, religion, like the four immeasurables, and use them to be. It doesn't take more than that. The acceptance that what was negative doesn't work anymore is a fertilizer. <coughs> and the acceptance that we all can and we all have access. And I feel that is just so beautiful. So today I really would love to invite the field, the world, the universe into the 12, into access of 12 and more to step up at consciousness architects, mm -hmm. to take consciousness beyond the mental and into that wholeness and the living system and the beautiful integrity of it all. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And let's let's not forget the one the most simplest but sometimes maybe the 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 kind of integrity that we tend to lose touch with in the in the world that we are living in in, in terms of because we think we are have to go out there to look for self worth that we have to go out there and prove something to somebody but as if you ask ourselves the question, prove to whom, prove what, to whom, isn't the fact that we exist in the world with a unique perspective of the whole enough? That is one of the most beautiful questions. And, and we can go endlessly forward from there, you know. Yes. But I really feel this is where it really comes down to. We, we are so disconnected from understanding. We have chosen this human experience to be here right now. We have chosen to be whole. How can we doubt ourselves in the world? Wholeness does not mean perfection, does not mean Good girl, bad girl, but good boy, bad boy. It doesn't mean that, you know, I fulfill all expectations. No, wholeness means I'm here. Exactly. And I really, I really, really love how you, how you bring that forth. And I feel we're getting so, and this is the entrapment, you know, we so, we don't, an entanglement as well. Who are we supposed to be? This one, this attribute, the other attribute. Now we're just here to be whole. Yeah, and it comes down to the whole, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing is we are not here to go out there in the world in a scarcity mindset to try to get our worth from somewhere or someplace out there. We are here in the world to express our worth to the world and into the world in whatever we are doing and there's nothing that has like a measurement stick to what you do because everything is valuable the only thing that truly matters that what from a, what i how i've learned to see it and i have had to go through this process myself and it's still continuing is that what makes me feel good and aligned and connected that is what i am supposed to be doing at that time exactly and if it changes it changes it changes yeah 
And this is maybe this expression of the harmonic resonance. Absolutely. And then we don't need to worry how this or the other person or operation or whatever perceives that. This is just what it is. Another way, of course, to say that is what makes your heart sing. Absolutely. If it makes your heart sing, it's obviously in harmonic resonance. It's obviously in your wholeness. Yeah, or the or if, do you feel passionate about it? Do you feel excitement? You know, follow your excitement. You know, follow your bliss, like Joseph Campbell said. You know, yes. there's and 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 there's like we talk about wholeness. We talk about harmonic resonance, and it and it is very much relational, relational in a way that respect the wholeness in in others, even though that wholeness is different from ours. It's a different perspective to the wholeness, but it's still we're still a part of the same whole if we allow ourselves to look at it that way. Um, but then is that that, you know, that there's a self-sovereignty to it. There is like, we are responsible to our own sense of wholeness, our own self. There's a sovereignty, healthy boundaries to it. But that's a whole different discussion. But like, uh, we learn to respect who we are as an individuals is a part of our relationship to the wholeness. Yes. The sovereignty. Uh, yeah, sovereignty. I think that's a whole theme on its own. I maybe that's one of the, <laughs> the next time, but I still want to finish off our dialogue today really about the relational side. If our own wholeness is not relating to the other our unique wholeness is not relating and connected to the other wholeness, sis. Then we are not in wholeness, then we are in ego. So one of the, maybe this is also a fundamental value of the wholeness together with integrity is the relationship. Mm -hmm. We are in relationship with the own unique wholeness and all the infinite wholeness that exists. Yeah. Wow. We can't make yeah. it. It just flows like that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think the next time we will go a little bit more into sovereign because it's also such an important, important theme. Yeah, but allow me to, to allow me to give you a metaphor. Please, um, I love metaphors. Um, on, so on sovereignty within wholeness. Please. It's interesting, like a few years ago, I saw, I got like uh, from, um, I got an image from a microscope, not from me personally, but I was introduced to a concept that in included uh, a picture of, of, of blood cells. Mm -hmm. um, and the blood cells in that, um, in that picture were all kind of scrambled together or you know sticking to each other and they were basically you know dysfunctional because of it because it is they are meant to go with the stream go with the flow go through the heart go you know and do, do whatever they are meant to do which is like uh well they actually have a very specific purpose they have a purpose of you know getting uh, oxygen and nutrition and distributing it to the wholeness which is the body exactly so so what what the when the image that i got also of, and this is the normal state of humans because of like the acidity and the body and the, you know is that the, the the blood cells are not flowing properly in the plasma stream yes. plasma plasma of the mm -hmm. uh, of, of the blood and they, so they got all the, the the blood cells tend to like stick together and you know and create like clusters that inhibit the natural flow and therefore what they inhibit is also the natural flow of oxygen and natural flow of nutrition throughout the body throughout the wholeness but this is almost symbolized a, a principle of enmeshment you know yes. when we get when there's some ideas and some things that we get we stick to when we in a stick in groups but we are somehow connected we believe it's a kind of a wholeness but it, we're not actually part of the actual wholeness and doing the actual thing we're supposed to be doing. 
So I was like, but then, but then if you if you add the right diet and you and, and you know whatever you know you live the lifestyle, there there's a change in the in the electromagnetism yeah. of the mm -hmm. membrane of those blood cells. So the, the mm -hmm. membrane will then repel everything that is not in alignment or rest or, or that, that is not like uh, just, <laughs> or, yeah basically they're, 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 and it won't stick to others in a certain in, in this way that it becomes dysfunctional so we'll have this healthy membrane around it that it will allow nu healthy nutrition and and, and, and uh, oxygen to come in and and also for toxins and unnecessary stuff to go out just and just doing its thing you know naturally this is what it's meant to be doing and that to me symbolize a healthy self sovereign you know perspective like a, it's like a healthy membrane that we have yes. so we take in what is necessary and get rid of what is not necessary without getting stuck or in the mess with someone or some group of people or some ideology, whatever. And there is flow naturally throughout the wholeness, doing what we are meant to be doing. Yeah. And that is just the vitality of life, bringing vitality of life. So that is the best metaphor I've come up with, what is actually self-sovereignty in relation to the wholeness, what that means. Yeah. What an amazing metaphor. Yeah, I, I can see <laughs> the vitality and and yes, it's it's so clear and it's amazing how nature and even our own body brings us these metaphors and we often can't read them. Metaphors are only accessible if we can read them. And I love how you bring sovereignty in here and the vitality and the flow and the wholeness and how it really shows in the blood that you are whole. Yeah. If you start clustering and entangling yourself in unhealthy situations or people, well, then you don't have a flow and you can no longer see the wholeness. Exactly. So it is a vital part of it. And we also, yeah, you're no longer sovereign and you no longer have the access of the wholeness. That's it. So it 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 is it it but it is it reveals a little bit something. It's reveals something interesting to us. It is a it is it is like a point of paradox. It is like a paradox. It is a paradox. <laughs> Step into our true individual sovereignty, then we would have more access to the whole that we are actually part of, and vice versa. This is what, at least this is my consciousness theory, you know. <laughs> <I was> like... <laughs> and it's interesting because we're stepping into that wholeness as we're letting go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, letting go what is no longer relevant, you know. This is also what, like we talked about in our first yes. dialogue. It's, the, it's going into the inquiry. Exactly. Into inquiry mode. The inquiry, mo inquiry mode is getting rid of things that are no longer relevant, letting them go. Exactly. And what happens when we let it go? Well, we make room for something that is already there, is already natural. It just comes out. You know, we, we have never been separated from the whole. It's no. just our ideas, no. you know. This is the cluster in your in your blood, in a way, in the metaphor. <laughs> yeah. That exactly. has now clouded your view and has separated you from that sovereignty of the wholeness it has never gone it can't go it's always here even beyond the metaphor of the blood and the physical body that at some time obviously won't exist anymore the wholeness is also not going it's not only the physical body because the physical body is just that human experience of it so we we are just who says that we are not just cells on the body of a planet? You know, if you will, we are. <laughs> but if you, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
I really, um, really enjoyed our exploration in the 12th and the 12-12. Yeah, there's a lot that came out of that. Yes, as <laughs> usual, it's just magic and just beautiful how it flows when, when you let go and when you are open and when you connect. And of course, the 12 and the wholeness on its own and its own uniqueness is one thing. But as two twelves come together, I feel a spark comes out that inevitably touches many more twelves. We have the 99 monkey principle that we also have mentioned before. As more and more wholeness, uniqueness comes together, there is more. Yeah, and I think, and I think it's like... Uh a sense of wholeness reinforcing itself you know it's like and i think this is what we can do for each other so much you know when we meet the right people when we meet people that are aligned in the same in the same way you know to this world view of wholeness you know it is something happens you know naturally it's like if we reinforce each other you know and and there's a life force that gets, you know, revitalized also through that process. We, you feel, re, you feel, you come to a conversation with, like, you know, for the person like yourself, and you feel revitalized from it because it is reinforcing this interconnectedness, this inner relationship. Yes, and yeah, of course, it applies to you too. It can't be happening with everybody. It needs two twelves who are really conscious of their twelve to come together. Doesn't mean not everybody has it, but it doesn't mean that everybody has the same click. Absolutely. And, and it cannot be like that. It cannot be like that. And yet the clicks that might come out are all equally exciting. 100%. And I'm really grateful for what we are actually co-creating here, all of four. But I feel it's a good, good amount of love and a good amount of wholeness Absolutely. I'm putting out for today because we will be back. That's for sure. And yeah, I'm just grateful, all of four. It's just so much magic to do dancing dialogues <laughs> with you. <laughs> Yeah, vice versa. Searching consciousness and archetypes. Yeah, thank you so much. Do you have a final word for concluding today? Well, there are no more words to be to be said. I think today. Uh, however, it it is like a reminder here, uh, even though we are because we have been saying so many words. That this process is not about words. It words. It's about connection, and connections. These connections are available to us, all of us, anywhere, at any time. And and, and it is like it is our it is our self connection that is primary here. You know that we come to connection with ourselves, our true selves, our authentic self. And I'm not talking about the conditioning. No. The self beyond the conditioning, and if we just do whatever is suitable for our for us to find a pathway to do that on a regular and consistent basis, what I think will happen is that wholeness will just naturally emerge through us, and we will experience it, experience these synchronicities or whatever opportunities. Whatever it is relevant to each and every one of us, we will just experience that more and more if we do that. And we will leave more of this conditioning behind and we will use it as a, as a fertilizer for the process. Then all the, what we deem to be negative becomes a fertilizer, a contrast to the value that we already hold. Beautiful. So, there are more words than I thought, but then... <laughs> the words also help us to get this harmonic resonance that you and I yeah. enjoy so much together and also enjoy to take out. So for today, thank
thank you so much. We will be back, no doubt. And I see you soon anyway. Thank you.